Hey, Brass Facts here. Today I'm doing a first impression of the primary arms Cyclops G2 ACSS, Gen 2. It's this guy right here. We'll start with some disclaimers real quick. First impressions means first impressions. That is what I thought about this product after, in my case, two range sessions in approximately 320 rounds. I'm not getting into specs, product descriptions, etc. Nor am I trying to sell you or prevent a sale of this product. I'm not telling you, hey, this is good or hey, this is bad. These are my first impressions and thus by definition are quite unsubstantiated for the lack of a better term. This is not a comprehensive review that will come later. So why am I doing this? For the views. Now, uh, well, a little bit, but a first look lets me vocalize what I think about the optic when initially trying it out. It allows me to form hypotheses and allows me to kind of direct the direction the review will take from the onset. So this is what I would do normally, but I'm doing it for a video, right? Uh, a good example of this would be with the primary arms 1 to 6x, which I'm reviewing currently. A big question I had right out of the gate was how does this perform at range? So I did a lot of ranged testing with it and that helped guide the review and kind of the objectives of the review. Because if you don't do this, you kind of just end up with a wishy-washy review and you more than often you will miss a lot of key factors because you do have to focus on a review. Uh, a second reason I'm doing this video on this guy specifically is because it's basically brand new and very few people have their hands on this right now. I'm right? currently out of stock and it's hard to get. However, a lot of people are interested in this product. The issue is a lot of people have rushed to get out their reviews. While there are a lot of reviews out there that are of decent quality, where they've done their due diligence, there are a lot of first impressions packaged as review. So they're trying to you know, sell you or not sell you the product, but the information is lacking and they're essentially just reading what's on the box and touting that as experienced information. And some of this stuff is just simply not true. Thus, uh, I'm second part of this video is me discussing some of the misconceptions about this optic and kind of clearing that up. To be sure, my video here is not a review. I'm not trying to sell you on this product, nor am I trying to dissuade you from this product. I'm just simply trying to clear up some information that seems to be kind of a large misconception around this product when I was looking around at other smaller reviews. First thing, as I mentioned, what are my first impressions out of this thing? How am I going to tackle this review? Out of the gate, this thing is quite impressive for a prism scope. Everyone that's looked through this thing was like, dang, this is kind of cool. It's very close to a red dot. That being said, is it as good as a red dot? That's the big question, right? Yes, no, I don't know yet. This is a hard optic to review because there's basically two facets. Do I review this as an independent optic without considering that red dots exist? Or do I review it in comparison with a standard red dot in this price range and kind of compare it to that? A big part of that is A, do you have astigmatism so bad that you can't use a red dot? If that's the case, then this gets a lot of points for you. However, if you have mild, like me, or no astigmatism, then I feel like you have to compare this to a red dot. So this might be a two in one review in that regard. Initial impressions for me with some astigmatism is that a red dot is still better. This being a what appears to be an impressive prism doesn't mean it still is not competing with a red dot. It is for most people. There are very, very few people with astigmatism so bad that uh, they can't use one of these. Don't get me wrong, there are other reasons to get a prism optic, but the astigmatism is probably the biggest reason, especially because prisms do have downsides. Uh, one, the, the, Probably the best thing I noticed with this optic is that having a chevron style aiming point versus a overlaid dot, right? Because you zero to the center of the dot typically with a prism or with a chevron, you aim to the top of the tip, just the tip. It just aim, makes for a finer aiming point, which is really nice at either long range or when I was shooting this, aiming at small targets at intermediate ranges. So about 75 yards, I was aiming at a uh, two inch swinger and that's a tough shot and the point aiming point instead of the dot overlay method uh, made for a much easier time, so to speak. Because I actually did that course of fire with this and then with an AR with a RMR on top and the RMR, I felt the need to dial it down or switch to the ACOG, but I was training with the RMR so I only used the RMR. However, everywhere else this thing kind of felt like it fell short. Emphasis on a little bit short, not like majorly so. I didn't really find myself wanting, I just noticed kind of in retrospect, huh. That was a little worse. So once again, first impressions, really important disclaimer. How did it 
for me, fall short of a red dot when I was messing with it. This gets into that second part I was talking about earlier, uh, misconceptions with a lot of reviews that kind of get spread around. First up, night vision compatibility. Is this night vision compatible? Yes and no. The illumination, which is adjusted on the side, is night vision compatible in the sense it won't blow out your night vision, right? However, due to the focal setup of this thing, if you look at this, you know, you're looking around with your night vision and then go to aim with this optic instantly, you bring the gun up, this will be blurry. You will not be able to see anything. Oh yeah, that's awful. You have to adjust the focus of their night vision monocular or binocular such that it works with this device. And if you do that, you can't see anything uh, with your night visions aside from through the optic. It is so blurry that the reticle itself actually blooms out and into non-existence. That's a pretty big deal in terms of night vision functionality. Uh, it's worth noting most optical based systems with a focal point have a issue with night vision. It's going to be blurry. LCAN, PX4i, TR24, the last three optics are reviewed. They're all somewhat usable, variably speaking, uh, in CQB, maybe out to 25 yards. You can still see roughly the shape, or you can see the shape of what you're shooting at. It's just not crystal clear. With this, it is uselessly blurry. You can adjust the diopter here, and that would work to a degree. However, A, this is one of the stiffest, no, this is the stiffest diopter adjustment I've ever seen in my life. I needed a tool to break it out of its initial setting. Also, um, if you adjust this, this optic is now useless when you go to your normal eye, it will be blurry. So I don't really view that as an acceptable option. Number two, a lot of people call this thing daylight bright. Yes, technically this is daylight bright. However, however I think when people watch the video and hear daylight bright, they're thinking, red dot bright. This is not red dot bright. When you look through it, um, the footage I'm using is here out in overcast zombie weather because my state is burning to the ground presently. Um, you can see the optic is red, but you don't get that fluorescent effect that red dots give off. Most people say, eh, not needed. You have a large reticle system that's etched. Sure, I'll have to go do the full review to see if the etched reticle um, that is tinted red uh, can be as fast as a red dot. However, that's beside the point. I'm talking about the illumination level. The illumination level is not, you know, red dot bright. It just turns the reticle red and that's about it. The, the fluorescent nature of a red dot is a big reason why it functions well as an aiming point, right? Your eye is really drawn to it. And that's why stuff like the Elcan and the Razer HD and the PX4i are held in decently high esteem because they get that red dot brightness, which really does well as an aiming thing. Uh, furthermore, you can kind of even see it here, but it's really obvious to the eye. The reticle is not evenly lit. The right side of the horseshoe is less lit, red dot wise, or uh, illumination wise, than the left side of the reticle. It's not an even illumination. I'll state this though, in a home defense environment, this barely ekes by that it's the illumination is strong enough that you can overpower your gajillion lumen flashlight uh, in a dark environment and still see your reticle well, right? Next up, uh, something mentioned a lot is red dot like parallax. Uh, as you can see in the footage, I can hit out to a target uh, 50 yards while aggressively moving the parallax back and forth that is shifting my head uh, around. However, the notion that this has a red dot like eye box is incorrect. Forward and back is obscene. This thing gives scout scopes a run for their money. You could mount this on an AK gas block, I'm sure, and actually use it. However, left to right is, it's okay. It's better than basically all LPVOs, but you don't have a magnified setting on this. And it's obviously worse than a red dot. You can't pin the reticle to the left or the right or up or down uh, without getting some scope shadow over your reticle and you kind of have to guess what you're shooting at. So that is not good. That being said, this is pretty close to a red dot. The best I've seen so far and definitely better than any LPVO. So that's the least of my concern in that regard. All right, next up, the ACSS reticle. This is the funniest because this keeps getting parroted by different channels and it's so blatantly wrong, it's hilarious and I don't know why people aren't calling them out on it. A lot of people think because this is called the ACSS, it's functionally identical to the primary arms one to six ACSS reticle, you know, the one that is very popular, right? And there are literally two videos, I'm not gonna call them out, say blatantly outright and some that imply it, 
but two that say it outright, that the subtensions over here are engaging, right? They're the subtension marks, like a BC, uh, a ballistic drop compensator. And they say in no uncertain terms that they use this to hit out to 300 yards. No, they did not use these to hit out to 300 yards. These are not subtensions. <laughs> if you use a dot like this, even for 556, five, you're gonna be sending your rounds into the next uh, county. These are ranging marks. You put these on people's shoulders to find their range. Uh, I, I don't really believe it's practical to use a 1x ranging hash mark at like 300 yards to accurately determine the range. Uh, but they're non-intrusive, so who cares? Whatever. Once again, just wanted to clear up the misconception. This is a chevron with a circle around it. There are no magical properties, really, in terms of long-range engagements over a simple dot. Yes, the top can be configured for a range, and then the bottom can be for configured for a range. But considering most people with a red dot are using like a 36, 50, or 25 yard zero, where you simply put the reticle on the target and shoot, um, this is not nearly as big of a selling point, I think, as people make it out to be. Okay, that's about it. I'm not going to get into any more details because I want to speak with a lot more experience of using this system. So my authority on the subject is basically as bad as it can be. However, this is what I noticed when using it initially, and it was in stark contrast to what of a lot of the other quote-unquote reviews that I've seen. And a lot of people are going to be buying these in the coming months, probably more than the entire lifespan uh, of the optic afterwards. So I wanted to get some points in to kind of balance out these overwhelmingly positive reviews. I'm not against people, once again, I'm not against people buying this. I'm just making sure the buyer isn't misled. All right, that's it. I've been talking way too much. I have some reviews that are shorter than this. So uh, I'll, I'll sign off here. Thanks for watching. Consider joining my Discord. We do a lot of discussions and I talk about a lot of this stuff before the videos hit. I also have an Instagram and some other stuff. Regardless, thanks for watching. We'll see you later.